Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a video of a podcast I had the opportunity to do with Chris from Corona Tools about a week ago. I just got the video file and I thought you might be interested in it. Talked through some of the things that are inspired the orchard, some of the motivations behind it, why am I the busy gardener, and uh, some of the other things behind what we do in this channel, some of the processes and some thoughts on what to do during this crazy pandemic time and how gardening uh, has ended up to be such a blessing for so many people and something you might want to consider as well. So hope you enjoy this thing and let's get busy. <laughs> All right, joining us today is Cameron Akrami, and he is also known as the Busy Gardener on, he's got YouTube, he's got uh, Instagram. So thank you, Cameron, for joining me today. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Chris, this is great. So maybe start by telling, telling me a little bit about the Busy Gardener, because we just connected on social media and you were kind enough to, to jump on this uh, podcast and interview, and would love to hear a little bit about, more about the Busy Gardener and sort of how you got started, what you're doing, and, and all that. Yeah, well, the Busy Gardener has um, exists because I believe that people should be able to grow healthy fruits and vegetables in their yard. And when you're first starting out, that can feel like a really intimidating thing. And so I set out uh, as really a recipient of seeing uh, different videos, especially on YouTube, um, when it comes to like planting fruit trees um, and being inspired by the things that I had seen online and really learned a lot. And I felt that people seeing the way that I'm doing stuff could also be a benefit. And that's been the case. I planted my first fruit tree uh, eight years ago, a little over eight, maybe eight and a half years ago now, and planted in, uh, in our front yard in kind of a small area, nine trees. And uh, then about five years ago, I planted a much larger orchard up there. And about two years ago, I started sharing... Uh, my fruit growing and vegetable growing journey on YouTube, and it's been a lot of fun. People, it's been really resonated, it seems, with people. So, very excited that that's helping out. And so, you you consider yourself a busy gardener? Do you like? You just don't get a lot of time. You have a, a, a regular day job or something like that. I mean, what, what makes you the busy gardener? Oh yeah, I thought that it, when I was thinking of that channel name and the moniker, it it kind of came to me immediately. So. Keep, being kept at bay right now inside my house are my five kids, ages 10 and under. Um, I do, I work a full-time job. I work in healthcare and I lead an organization um, where we help seniors to stay at home so that they don't have to go off to a, a nursing home. It's sometimes called home care. Um, I've got uh, a wife and a home and um, family considerations. We're active in our church as well. And so there's, there's a lot going on and Sometimes when you look at um, when you look at some of the things people are doing either in their home or in their garden or in their orchard, it seems like they've got this unending fount of time, and I don't have that. And so I wanted to be able to create a thing where I'm showing the way that a busy guy is able to still enjoy doing these sorts of things without a massive time commitment. Well, and I think you really speak to what a lot of us are going through. I mean, we all uh, a lot of us have families and. and uh, we're, we're all very busy, but then this time, you know, with, with COVID going on and, and pandemic gardening is such a big thing and a lot of people are kind of jumping into it. So I think this is really interesting that, you know, one that we connected when we did, but that you're actively out there doing that and you're kind of showing people that even though you're busy, you can still kind of have this stuff and, and, and be able to have quite a variety and provide for your family. So that, that's really great. Yeah. So what kind of fruit trees are you growing and, and like how much fruit are you growing on an on a annual basis? Yeah, well, so the, the orchard is fairly new. Five years for an orchard is pretty beginner stages still. Uh, we're starting to just now see production in, in most of the fruit. Um, believe it or not, on the property I have it, over 60 trees, 60 wow. fruit trees. We kind of have a thing now where if it doesn't give fruit of some sort, it doesn't get planted. Um, so don't have a lot of just decorative stuff and the yield. I, I kind of joke that I planted all these trees because as my kids are growing, I'm just hoping that those trees outpace my kids. Um, and we've, we've being in Southern California and kind of really even where in Southern California we are, we're in Rancho Cucamonga right up against the foothills 
And so we're in this real sweet spot between being able to grow, obviously, all of the subtropical stuff like oranges and things like that, as well as being able to grow a lot of the deciduous stuff that sometimes needs a higher amount of chill hours. We don't get too many chill hours. I think maybe around three or 400 hours a year max. But we, we've tried to um, use Dave Wilson Nursery's idea of what they call backyard orchard culture. And one of the key facets of that is being able to plant with successive ripening in mind. And so we're, the, the goal really is to have fruit year round. So we've got our citrus in the winter, then followed in the spring by cherries and some blueberries and then blackberries. And then the summertime hits and we've got a ton of stone fruit. I'm um, going into the fall. We've got apples and pomegranates, persimmons. Um, so and we've got, you know, now we've, we've got dragon fruit growing. We've got mango. We've got passion fruit we're using. So we, there's a lot going on up there and they're almost, it, it's harder to find a time where something isn't fruiting than there, you know, than there is with, with fruiting. We've got fruit pretty much year round with the exception of maybe a month or two. Well, that, that's impressive that you're able to, uh, one, grow all that and that you really <laughs> kind of thought about, you know, thought it all out to where you have fruit growing pretty much year round and that you've always got something available. So that, that, that's, that's amazing. How do you manage all that? Well, that's where the busy part comes in. Um, you know, I, I say that jokingly, managing it, managing fruit trees is, is very doable for the average person. It takes a bit of time to dig the holes, to put the trees in, to kind of get the drip irrigation set up. But as long as they're being watered a couple of times a week with a nice deep watering, if you've got a good layer of mulch on there that's going to help to stabilize the soil temperatures, it doesn't take a ton of time to manage a bunch of fruit trees. If anything, it's just going up there and keeping an eye on it. That's where most of the issue is. But the day-to-day -day stuff, it's not like a vegetable garden where you miss one day of watering in the summertime and your stuff is just fried. Fruit trees, they're a lot slower moving system. And so uh, it actually, I, I recommend if somebody doesn't have a ton of time, fruit trees are a wonderful way to, to grow some of your own stuff. Well, now let me ask you this. So you said you had how many acres of, of your orchard? Oh, the, the orchard isn't around 5,000 square feet. We live on a half acre total. A bunch of it is yard that we're going to be terracing into some, some grow space. But up in the orchard, it's about a 40, 45 by 90 foot. Sorry, it's a 60 by 90 foot um, area <clears throat> that we just exclusively devoted to growing fruit. That's awesome. Well, and if, if people don't have that much space, have you ever had experience in growing in containers or, or fruit trees in containers? Some container fruiting. <clears throat> I've, got, I've got a couple of kumquats that I put in a couple of wine barrels. Although I would tell you the first nine trees that I planted are planted in the space of a single car in the ground. Wow. And so sometimes people think, well, I don't have space for all of these trees. But again, that uh, backyard orchard culture, it, it's different than a commercial grower where you think, you know, we just drove up, for example, up to Oregon and going up the grapevine. You see orchard after orchard of just massive sprawl, these huge trees. And a backyard orchard culture is different. As a backyard guy, I'm not trying to get a commercial yield. I'm just trying to get enough fruit for my family. And so what I do is rather in the space where you would normally plant one tree, you're easily able to plant three or four trees. And so that's how I was able to fit nine trees very easily and comfortably in the space of a car uh, in our front yard. So container fruit, container growing is a, a possibility. Um, but one reason I, I haven't done it is because trees are happiest in the ground. If they're in a container, it's, it's absolutely an option for people, but it's going to take more attention. And uh, the inputs, you've got to be a lot more, sen they're a lot more sensitive to heat. They're a lot more sensitive to your watering patterns um, because there's, it's a smaller system that can be affected more easily by the weather. Well, absolutely. So since you've got so many trees and different selections, how do you go about selecting your trees? And, you know, just what, what, what's really uh, important about that? Well, first of all, it has to be something that you're actually going to eat. <laughs> you know, if you don't like quince, it doesn't matter if there's a deal on them at Home Depot, don't buy quince. So grapefruit, for example, when I was selecting the, the type of fruit, um, I'd gone to a, a taste testing, which I was real fortunate to be able to do. Somebody had all these different citrus out. 
And I was able to t test them. And it, it wasn't for the purpose of buying trees. It just happened to be a kind of a demonstration. But that sort of thing was helpful. If you try a fruit uh, from one of your neighbors and you ask them, if you're like, oh, man, this is really tasty. What is this? Um, and then some of it is just knowing the category. If you generally like a certain type of fruit, if you like nectarines, then using a site like DaveWilson.com um, or another fruit growing site, Stark Brothers or something, you can see a category. And the main thing you're looking for, um, probably two main things that I was looking at after deciding that I actually like the fruit. One is figuring out in a little grouping, because I was planting these in little groups of two, three, or four trees, is figuring out within that grouping, is there success of ripening within that grouping? So that way you have one fruit for one month, and then a month later you've maybe got another fruit, um, you know, for that month and then the next month, all within the space of a single tree. So figure out if you, the success of ripening if you want to extend your harvest season. So that's important to me. And you also want to make sure not every tree is self-fruitful. In other words, it needs another type of tree in order to pollinate its fruit and to set fruit. Um, some are self-fruitful and don't require a separate pollinating tree to do it, but many do. And even if it doesn't require one, oftentimes these trees do better when they have another pollinator. So those are two main things. And really the pollinator ought to be the first consideration is you need it. If you're going to get something, this happens a lot with like cherries. People plant a beautiful cherry. It has these beautiful flowers on it. And then it doesn't give them any fruit and they think they're doing something wrong. And they think they need to water it more or fertilize it when really it just needed a second cherry to be planted. That was one that, that matched with it. So making sure that it can be pollinated is one. Um, if it needs it. And then for me, success of ripening is another consideration. Well, that's great. And so let me ask you this. So now you're the busy gardener, you've got this channel and, you know, obviously all these trees. What, what, what are you really getting out of all this now that you've done this? Well, honestly, people engaging with the videos and hearing stories about how they found the courage to go out and do this is so rewarding. Because I remember being in that spot and being terrified. I remember I, <clears throat> I had whitewashed my trees when I first planted them, which is important to do so they don't get sunburned. And I used, a, you can use a latex paint um, to do that, like a 50-50. And you're supposed to use an indoor paint. And I use an exterior paint, not thinking about it. And it's not actually a big deal in retrospect, but I freaked out because, oh, no, an exterior paint has these fungicides in it that are, you know, how do a different thing than interior. And I was out there in February, freezing my hands off, scrubbing these tree trunks with a sponge and just feeling so nervous about the whole thing. And so I remember being there. And so I think for me, that really is the biggest thing that I get out of it. Um, there's some other things as well, where I'm making great connections with people like you and others who do this sort of thing and just bumping heads with some people that are really passionate about this. Obviously, having the fruit for our family and for our friends is wonderful. Just going up and being able to pick blackberries off of our vine is so wonderful. Going up and taking a tree-ripened piece of fruit. I did a taste test video where I bought some store-bought the exact same thing that I'm growing in my orchard, some citrus. And there was, no, there was no contest. And so being able to do that and share that with people uh, was great. We've kind of been toying with the idea of, of getting the kids uh, for us, like having a family team is really important. And even though our kids are really young, we're wanting to um, just get them involved and, and have this be a family thing. And so we have the idea of maybe doing a farm stand in the front of our house by the street if our neighbors don't have too much of an issue with it, where once our yields get big enough to that point, we may be able to um, do that or talk to some of the local independent markets perhaps and kind of share some of that. And your kids are excited about this? Do they get involved with, you know, your your day-to-day -day operations? And, and obviously, they love the fruit, so. <laughs> yeah, they love the fruit. I think if they know the fruit is, is, is the payoff at the end, either that or a little bit of money. Yeah, you know, they're pretty young, so they get excited for about the first, you know, six minutes of it. And then something else. Pulling weeds is monotonous. <laughs> <laughs> but not just one thing that everybody hates to do, so that doesn't surprise yeah. me. <laughs> so let me ask you this before we close out. Just you know, we we talked about pandemic gardening and a lot of people kind of jumping into this. What would you say are some like key takeaways, things that you've learned that you would pass on to somebody who's just kind of getting started with this? Yeah, if somebody is just getting started, I think uh, first of all, 
just take a deep breath. It's a weird time right now. And you may feel like you're wanting to gain some sort of control over what's going on because everything else feels so out of control. And so just take a deep breath. Um, gardening is something that is a very grounding thing. When you get stuck in your head, there's a saying, that, you know, get out of your head and get into your body. And do, gardening and fruit trees is a wonderful way to be able to get started with something like that. And so they've done studies prior to all of this about the health benefits and the mental and emotional benefits of gardening and of being um, out among trees, believe it or not. Just even being among them, let alone working in them, it has some real beneficial things. <clears throat> so pandemic gardening, you know, unless you're going to do something where you're truly trying to supplement in a very meaningful way and for a financial reason, um, unless you're trying to do that, you don't have to worry about crops that are going to give you the biggest yield or that are going to give you the biggest, um, you know, bang for your buck. If you want to do that and you have the space to do that, go for it. I think during this period of time, know that it's accessible. And I would plan something that you just like to eat. Right now, I don't want to say like comfort food, but I think there is an element of decide that, the, you know, see if there's something that you really enjoy eating that is just tasty. That every time you have one, you go, mmm. <laughs> and find a little place. If you're just getting started, you probably, it would be good, if, especially if you're going to do um, like vegetables or something like that. Um, you know, start small. You're going to learn a whole lot of, you're going to make a lot of mistakes at the beginning, and that's okay. Hopefully, you won't be out there scrubbing your fruit trees like I was uh, in the middle of the night. <clears throat> but I think just starting small, have a bit of a plan. Do just a modicum of research on what you intend to plant to make sure it works in your climate. Just because they sell you the seeds or that this tree is for sale at your local nursery doesn't mean that it's going to do great right where you're at. So you may want to just pay attention to what the needs are. It doesn't take a lot of time. Just Google whatever the plant is that you're looking to do. Um, and then plant it. If it's vegetables or some sort of small plant, you're going to have results really quick. If it's a fruit tree or something like that, it's going to take you know a couple of years at minimum to do it. I've got this little like ever-bearing mulberry here. I ordered this mail order. Um, and I'm just it grew from this little stem now into this cool little tree. And so this is going to be ready to go in the ground soon. Maybe give us some fruit next year. So there, there's a saying, Chris, where I say, you know, you, you, people sometimes beat themselves up about the things they should have done a long time ago. And they say, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant one is today. And so there's really no point in delaying. So I would say just go, go and get started. Go do it. You got this. Well, and I'm also going to add that since I've gotten to know you and saw your Busy Gardener YouTube channel, you've got a ton of videos on there, and it just seems like such a great resource for anybody who's kind of searching mm. for information. I, I think you've obviously done some, you've done your homework, you've learned a lot, and you've, uh, you've documented that on your YouTube. So I would recommend anybody who's got questions, that's where they go. Yeah, join us over there. People chime in, and then, yeah, there, there are any number of things... It's kind of funny. I almost put some things off because I'm waiting to find the time to film it. And so pruning, I'm going to actually be pruning out this weekend <laughs> and doing my summer pruning about a month later than I normally would have done it. But yeah, tons of videos on there, lots of engagement and just about any major thing that you would be wondering about, especially getting started, how to plant close, like I was describing earlier, that backyard orchard culture. Um, how to fertilize your trees, how to prune your trees. Those are all on there. Those are probably the most common and biggest questions that I get as far as people starting out. Well, that's awesome, Cameron. I really enjoy that you were able to to join me today, and I hope you do join me for, for other future uh, interviews and podcasts, but this has been really great. Thanks for coming on and sharing today. That's been a bunch of fun. Thanks for letting me come on and share for a bit. All right, Cameron. Thanks. Take care. <laughs> Bye, Chris.